Hello, as you can see I've got uh, Titan X plugged in and uh, I decided to re-record this video because today I actually have time to walk you through and talk about everything you need to know um, about overclocking your Titan X. So I'm going to start with just showing uh, the stable overclock that I achieved. It's actually 220. So there we go. That's the uh, specs from the t from the GPU Z. If you are interested, and with that out of the way, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can overclock yours. Um, the one I have in my system is Gigabyte uh, Titan X, and uh, why am I saying this? Because if you want to use core voltage uh, tweaking utility for example as you can see I'm using MSI afterburner by the way um, all the all the software that I will be using today it will be available for download it is available for free this benchmark and this MSI afterburner uh, I'll leave the links in the description below but about the voltage so as you can see uh, the settings are set to unlock it but it does not work uh, MSI Afterburner does not unlock it. The only reason I can think of is because this is a gigabyte card, but I have no way to actually um, checking this because I only have one Titan X from Gigabyte. So I, I've gone ahead and downloaded Gigabyte's overclocking utility, and here the the voltage is actually unlocked. So um, if you are uh, going to overvolt your uh, GPU, then um, consider downloading uh, your uh, native uh, overclocking utility. If it's EVGA, then download Precision X. Uh, if it's MSI, then here is the good one. But for demonstration purposes today, I will be using MSI Afterburner. And um, <clears throat> yeah, basically, let's begin. So, what you do is you fire up the benchmark and you choose uh, windowed mode so don't put tick here so remove the tick set it up to extreme ultra high textures and run the benchmark once you've once you fired up the benchmark go back to MSI afterburner and as you can see I have here stats um, so let me just turn off that sound. Stats lined up. Power, temperature, core clock, memory clock. Uh, these are the four that I like to monitor. And to set it up in this way, you go to settings, monitoring, and then you can move them around by uh, clicking and dragging and dropping. What is the top? If it's at the top of the list, then it's gonna show up at the top here. <clears throat> so that's the way I like to set it up. As you can see, there are more, but I like to set it up so that they are all at the top. And as you can see, this is a stock cooler, and uh, all Titan Xs uh, pretty much come with a stock cooler, with exception of um, hybrid cooling from EVGA, which is totally overpriced in my opinion. But if you are going to to water cool this card, it is going to be your best option. You don't have to do it, but it's just nice to have those temperatures low. Because even at stock, um, I've seen it rise to 84 degrees, 83, 84 degrees when I was gaming. And obviously the fan speed at the moment is on auto. I will leave it on auto, but if you do overclock and if you do decide to play your games with overclock and on stock cooling I I'm uh, actually advising you to go ahead and enable the fan user defined uh, control and tweak this um, I don't recommend going above 70% speed because you know it's just gonna break your fan quicker um, and also make sure that your GPU doesn't run at like 
over close to 90 degrees is gonna kill it sooner because the the more the temperature the less the lifespan of the GPU is um, right so the way you want to set set it up first is you put MSI afterburner in this corner and so you can see the majority of the picture here and basically what you do is you want to find your maximum memory clock first um, this is the way I do it by the way there are more than there's more than one way of doing it but I'm doing it this way I like to find the memory clock first the top one um, pretty much in my overclocks I've done 970 GTX 980 and this Titan and I found that all the memory can run no problem at 8 gigahertz which basically means that you can go ahead and increase it all the way to 500 uh, for example on my 980 it went up to something like 560 or something like that but I always I always down clock it and in this case I found 500 if you're feeling brave then you can just apply something like 350 first if you're feeling brave and then go up uh, from there but I'm going to show you the slow and uh, safe way so basically you start at zero and what you want to do is increase it in increments of 50 at first because there is no danger with this memory you increase it by 50 hit apply and then watch this image for about 10 20 seconds for any signs of unstable overclock uh, the, this is if it's unstable it is going to result in changes in color um, spots appearing textures flickering or missing you don't have to have a microscope and inspect it closely you are going to see and notice it without a doubt it will be very noticeable if the overclock is unstable if you if you watch it and the overclock is stable you can make the next step and increase it by another 50 hit apply and then watch the image again and that is all the way to I suggest going all the way to about 350 and after that take smaller steps increase it by 25 hit apply and then watch the picture again another 25 and watch the picture again right so once we found the memory for example if it was 360 uh, 560 you don't really want to run it at absolute maximum especially with the stock cooler bring it down to I don't know 500 if you're happy with 450 450 or 400 it still is very very good overclock and after that oh I'm sorry I forgot about something very important before you do the memory overclock well it, before you do core overclock especially you need to increase your power limit as you can see here it didn't go up above 99 at the moment but once you start increasing your core clock it actually is going to draw more power uh, from your power supply so you can just go ahead and uh, apply it to the max 110 straight away and then start um, once you found your maximum memory clock you can bring it down a little bit and start tweaking your core clock I like doing it in increments of 10 that's just the way I am I like to go slowly about it and reason for that is that when you reach unstable overclock um, if you were going in small steps um, in most cases it will be just a driver crash and then it will recover straight away like a few seconds later it will be recovered and you can hit that reset button and basically remember the core that you've chosen the core number that you've chosen and roll it back so basically 
that's that's why I like uh, doing it in small increments. If you're doing it in larger increments, it can cause a hard freeze, which basically means that your system is gonna freeze. You will not be able to reset it. So you're actually gonna have to go ahead and hit the reset button on your case. And that is never good. So yeah, increments of 10, increase it by 10, hit apply, and then watch the image again for any signs of instability as previously with the memory. And then another 20 if everything is okay and you're going up and up and up and up and up. In my case, it was all the way up to 220. As you can see, everything is running just fine. I've applied it. So then if you run into any signs of instability, you can all your that is your cue for taking one step back. For example, if I hit instability at 220 and the driver crashed or computer froze after the um, restarting the wind windows or after the driver uh, restarted, then you take one step back to 210, hit apply, and that is basically your maximum overclock without touching the voltage. If you want to go further and touch the voltage, then that is the thing. Um, you can go back to 220 and increase the voltage by 10 millivolts, for example. Um, and then hit apply and see if it became stable again, because that's what core voltage is there for. You increase it to try and get that uh, core stable again. And uh, that's why I was saying, you know, use your uh, native overclocking utility for that. If you have MSI, you probably will be able to unlock it with MSI Afterburner. But yeah, let's get down to the actual... Uh... Oh, sorry, I went off the track a little bit there. So as you can see, even now the temperature is rising and it's at 85 right now which is pretty high, and the fans are already at 56%. So as you can see, the power limit is at 108, and you actually hit the maximum of 110 already, so... Yeah, there isn't, there isn't much headroom for overclocking on this thing. Um, but still, look at this. 1.4 GHz core, and I'll tell you something. It really makes a big difference when you are gaming because um, overclocking, even overclocking uh, my GTX 970 to 1.6 gigahertz, I was not able to achieve that kind of you know performance boost that I achieved with this Titan X. Uh, you actually can look up the uh, benchmarks that I did previously with the stock versus overclock video that I've done and posted. And uh, that is pretty much it. Once you've done your overclock, if you want to make sure that it is stable, you can uh, leave the benchmark to, um, to run with the settings for, if, if you're up for it, you can leave it for a couple of hours, uh, maybe even more, it's up to you. It's uh, up to the you know. It's up to you to to decide how um, how dedicated you are to actually checking if your uh, if your overclock is going to be stable under heavy load for long periods of time. But if you're happy with it, especially like because this is this is a synthetic benchmark and it's not a real world gaming. It means that even though this is running fine, uh, it can still be causing problems. This overclock can still be causing problems for you in games. So next thing you want to do is you want to make some extra time and go ahead and play a game and actually look in the game for any signs of instability. The same ones, textures, flickering, um, disappearing or some changes in color uh, any kind of 
dark spots and so on and so forth so forth if it does appear then you're gonna have to go back to your overclocking utility and start tweaking the core voltage or the core clock memory clock just start going start rolling it back bit by bit so for example if it wasn't stable at 220 and 500 bring it down to uh, 210 and 480 you can do them both together um, and then just fine-tune it because that is the thing if you want to find the absolute maximum you will have to like play with these two settings back and forth back and forth you're gonna have to play around and invest some time into actually finding the best solution I feel like I forgot something else oh yes of course uh, the profile saving so once you found your uh, your overclock you can save your profile by clicking save and then choosing the profile number and this little guy here apply overclocking and system startup I do not recommend choosing this option unless you are hundred percent sure and you've tested it thoroughly that your overclock is stable because what can happen uh, next is if you are going to apply unstable overclock and basically it's gonna it will be it will be harder to get rid of because obviously with every system startup the overclock will be applied and your system can freeze and you're gonna have to go into a safe mode and uh, tweak it from there right so that is actually it that is all for now uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video in any Titan X uh, owners you can share I would appreciate it if you share uh, what kind of overclocks you were able to, you were able to achieve in the comments below if you have any questions um, also comment below I will be doing more um, guides about overclocking different cards and as always until next time RG out <laughs>